Hey guys, now that fall is in the air, I thought it was time for a delicious apple tart recipe. There's nothing quite like an apple tart when it starts to get chilly outside, and now that apples are in season, I wanted to show you how to make a real beauty of a tart. So for this recipe, we are gonna be working with my basic tart dough recipe. Now you guys have seen me make this several times on this channel. I will just leave you the recipe in the description, and that way we can get to more of the fun part of this recipe. So you're gonna need two batches of the dough, and we're gonna start by rolling out the first one. And we are going to fit our dough into a nine inch removable bottom tart tin. And once you have your dough all fitted in your tin, it is a good idea to go around and trim the edges of the dough to make sure it's all roughly the same size overhang, uh, because then we're going to flip it inside the tin to create kind of like a double crust. And that will help create a lot more structure to our tart and prevent it from crumbling. And then once you do that, just press that dough all around, and then you can take a sharp knife and trim the edges and just make sure there are no cracks. And then I like to take my tart dough and pop it in the freezer while I prepare the filling just to make sure it's nice and cold uh, before it hits a hot oven. This is an important step just to prevent your dough from melting and shrinking if it's too warm when it hits the oven. Then for the filling, in a large bowl, we're going to add three cups of diced apple. And I'm working with gala apples, which I think is a good variety to use for a pie because they're sweet and not too tart. I like to leave the skin on the apple because I really like a rustic looking apple tart. There's a ton of nutrients in that skin and why take the time to peel them? So I leave it like that. But if you want to peel it, you definitely could. And then to our apples, we're gonna add two tablespoons of brown sugar, a teaspoon and a half of pumpkin pie spice. I'll leave you a link in the description if you wanna know how to make your own pumpkin pie spice if you live outside the States and can't get it. Two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice and two tablespoons of water. You can go ahead and just toss that all up, making sure everything is combined. And then we're going to add half a cup of roughly chopped walnuts. Then you can set your filling aside, and now let me show you how to make that beautiful decorative topping. So then we're gonna take our other dough and roll that out on a floured surface to an eighth of an inch thick. Then take out your favorite fall-inspired cookie cutters. You could use leaves, you could use acorns. I'm using one of each. I think there's something really charming about these motifs, especially in the fall. I really like these cookie cutters because you press it down into the dough and it creates a really nice cut. And then you'll see there's a little tension spring that you press down and that actually creates the beautiful relief pattern that you see on top. And it makes it super easy to then go over to your baking sheet, uh, make sure it's lined with a little parchment paper and pop it out. And they don't really have to handle these cutouts, which really preserves their shape. So we're gonna do a couple of acorns, a couple of these oak leaves, and isn't it just the most beautiful thing? They're so charming. So I'll leave you a link in the description where I got these. They make all kinds of motifs, but really any kind will work. At this stage, we're going to take our tart tin out of the freezer, and then we're gonna fill it with half a cup of just unsweetened applesauce. And you just wanna spread it out all over the bottom to make sure it's well distributed. And then you're gonna add your apple filling on top. And then you wanna take a tablespoon of butter that you've diced into tiny cubes and nestle that all in around the apples sort of hiding it under the apples. And this will then melt and combine with the sugar and the juices of the apples and create kind of a nice syrupy center. And at this stage, really, this is where you can show your artistic flair and you can just arrange your cutouts however you like best. I like to put the acorn in the center and then put the leaves on either side. And there you go, isn't that beautiful? And then you wanna brush each of your cutouts with a little bit of egg white. And this is going to give our cutouts a really beautiful shine and golden brown color once it's baked. Then we're gonna place our tart on a baking sheet and put it in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for just 15 minutes. This will set our tart and create a really nice golden brown color on our cutouts. Then you wanna reduce the heat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and continue to bake for 15 to 20 minutes. You'll know your tart is done once it's nice and golden brown and those apples look nice and cooked. And you might be seeing a little syrup bubbling up to the top. Then once your tart is completely cool, you can go ahead and remove the tart ring and then you can place it on a cake stand. And then I do like to dust it with just a little bit of powdered sugar just to make it look a little bit more elegant. And there you have it, a beautiful apple walnut tart that is as delicious as it is beautiful. And I do like to serve this with a nice dollop of homemade whipped cream that has been spiked with a little bit of Calvados, which is an apple liqueur, uh, which is really delicious with apple tarts. But if you don't drink, you could totally leave out the Calvados and just serve it with some plain homemade whipped cream. 
and I'll leave you my recipe in the description. And when you bite into this, you'll see how delicate the pastry is mixed with those flavorful apples and of course the crunch of the walnuts and that delicious Calvados cream. It's a fantastic apple tart recipe, perfect for fall entertaining, or this would be a great one for Thanksgiving too, which is coming up. All right, you guys, I hope you give it a try and let me know what you think. Subscribe for more quick and easy recipes and I'll see you back here next week with another one. Until then, bye.